you know, the excitement of buying a, you know, a brand new house in like a great community and we were so happy. And then what we were left with was a giant mortgage payment. Um, we couldn't furnish it properly. The excitement soon turned into, I guess, like pain and frustration and anxiety. We were living what we thought was the dream. It turned out to be the nightmare. It, which essentially turned out to be our nightmare. We were really living life for just the things, I guess, of this world. Um, things that are very temporary, that, you know, take um, payments or take um, a lot of time away from the things that we truly value. And so when we couldn't pay, you know, our phone bills and or a heat bill, we still, you know, prioritized going to the mall and buying things. You know, couldn't keep up on our bills, yet we went out and bought um, like a 62-inch plasma TV. Those payments would just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where they're calling you and... You don't want to answer your you phone. You don't want to answer your phone anymore. I know one thing we weren't living for is we really weren't living for, I guess, God, and we really weren't living any sort of life, I guess, of obedience. And so we just kind of were floating through through life and our, you know, our relationship was suffering because of it, our parenting and just every area of our life was um, just totally, totally off track. We would fight, we would argue. Um, we had different visions for where, you know, when I was paid, where that money should go. And so that created, you know, a tension in the house. And, you know, for me, it was a lot of selfishness. And for Colleen, it was like, you know, we need to feed the family. So rock bottom for us was having um, just our, our power turned off. I remember Kirk coming home from work and I asked him, I said, did you get paid? And he said, no, and I just bawled my eyes out. Being, you know, the husband, the dad, um, the, essentially the leader of the family, and you're letting your family down, it kills you. And it just, it made me think that, you know, maybe there's more to life. We actually met a couple at our church, Chris and Sue, who just came into our life and had just started to, to question things that none of our friends questioned. Do you want to be a stay-at-home mom? How bad do you want that? Do you want to work on your marriage? Do you want to, you know, prosper in, in areas of your life, like giving, like being generous? I guess they just really, I guess, expose things to us, how we were living and how it was completely against everything that we had believed in. And Kirk and I were, were like, well, why are we killing ourselves to pay for this house or pay for this um, lifestyle if it, in the end, you know, our house is going to cost us our marriage? We realized that a lot of our values in our life had to change and that God had to be number one value in our life. And so I remember coming home one weekend and we decided to make the decision to move. And we were scared. We, were, we didn't know if this was the right decision. Honestly, we prayed about it and God just said, go with it. You're going to feel so much more free and your phone's going to stop ringing. So. <laughs> After it was sold and we moved, you know, into a place like this, um, it was very freeing and um, it allowed us to make great decisions to, you know, just to pay for things in cash, buy a vehicle for, you know, a thousand dollars. That, you know, people don't think like that anymore. People think uh, day to day, month to month, I need the newest. And we just switched the way we thought. It wasn't until we sold our house we really realized just how debt had just made us so selfish. Debt is really hard because you're only able to think about you. And then it doesn't allow you to be generous in any way, not even with your time, your money, nothing. Our lifestyle was one that didn't allow us to be generous with even tithing. I'd just like to share a Bible verse that I believe that would really sum up um, just, I guess, our journey. Um, it's Romans 4, 20. No unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubtingly question concerning the promises of God, but he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. So yeah, even within, you know, selling our house and, um, and that, you know, our faith did grow in doing something that, you know, really didn't make a lot of sense to us. Um, but that, yeah, we have grown and we have been empowered and we have, um, just to yeah, have really flourished. We really don't think like how we used to think. Um, 
We look at money as more so as a tool to help and bless people, but not something that defines who we are. We're very generous with our time now and helping mm -hmm. people. Um, a lot of people take that extra time they have and, you know, it's sitting in front of a TV or surfing the internet. Mm. Whereas we would rather, you know, give our time to help somebody figure out their life. At the end of the day, your house does not give you a hug. When you open that front door, who comes and runs and gives you the biggest hug is your kids and your wife. And it's totally worth changing your value system if you can think that way, so. I was crying, so. <laughs> No matter what he calls you to do, whether it's being a stay-at-home mom, whether it's, you know, in ministry, like, like it doesn't matter. Every, he's called us all to do something great and he's all given us enough power to complete that.